Hi guys, this is Mrs. Joyce. This week we are looking at the poem Checking Out Me History by John Agard. Now this is probably one of the most popular poems in the entire anthology. Um, those of you who came to Poetry Live with myself, um, Miss Hildebrand, you will remember John Agard as the last person who spoke. He is somewhat of a legend and a little bit of a rock star in terms of the GCSE poetry section and he's always the last person to speak because he's amazing and so you will have heard this poem being spoken okay um for those of you who haven't heard him read it and i do strongly suggest that you go and look at this i have put a link for the um poem itself being read by him i am going to attempt to read it in a minute um, but please be aware this is an attempt, okay? You really need to hear him read it to you. It is so powerful and it's so honest and you need to hear it. Okay, so I'm going to start by reading it out loud to you and then we're going to get cracking, okay? So, Checking Out My History by John Agard. Dem tell me, dem tell me. What dem want to tell me? Bandage up me eye with me own I, with me own history. Blind me to me own identity. Dem tell me about 1066 and all that. Dem tell me about Dink Whittington and he cat. But Tucson Louverture, no dem never tell me about that. Tucson, a slave with vision, lick back Napoleon battalion. And first black republic born. Tucson de Thorn to the French. Toussaint, the beacon of the Haitian revolution. Dem tell me about the man who discovered the balloon and the cow who jumped over the moon. Dem tell me about the dish ran away with the spoon, but dem never tell me about Nanny de Maroon. Nanny, seafar woman of mountain dream, fire woman, struggle, hopeful stream to freedom river. Dem tell me about Lord Nelson and Waterloo, but dem never tell me about Shaka de Great Zulu. Dem tell me about Columbus and 1492, but what happened to the Carib and the Arawak too? Dem tell me about Florence Nightingale and she lamp, and how Robin Hood used to camp. Dem tell me about old King Cole was a merry old soul, but dem never tell me about Mary Seacole. From Jamaica, she travelled far to the Crimean War. She volunteered to go, and even when the British said no, she still braved the Russian snow. A healing star among the wounded, a yellow sunrise to the dying. Dem tell me, dem tell me what dem want to tell me. But now I checking out me own history. I carving out me identity. Okay, as I said, massively powerful poem and one of my absolute favourites. I mean, you know I absolutely love the poetry in this anyway. But this is one of the ones that makes me get all excited when I get to read it out. It's great. Okay, so the first thing you should notice about the structure is there's no obvious whole structure to the piece. I mean, I can't really show it to you there. Also, don't forget, I've only put it in two columns because that's how it fits on one page. Okay, and that's because this is a spoken word poem. Can you see that? There we go. Move the camera. Okay, so it's a spoken word. It is, there's no, there's a definitive pattern to it, but there's not any obvious structure. Well, there is an obvious structure, but it's not regular. So there's a definitive pattern and the structure itself is more to do with speech pattern, the way it's spoken. And you should have noticed as well that it is in the first person. Okay, it's all me. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. So, we have a very definite um, organisation. But each stanza is slightly longer or shorter. So if you go to the very top here, you'll see you've got three lines, two lines, four lines. And then you've got this very long section, which is, you know, almost really loads of really very very short phrases not sentences because there is no punctuation
Now, when we think about why there's no punctuation, we often find that's because it gives it a fast, not fat, I can't write today, a fast pace, which kind of ups the anger. It's a rant. It's a monologue. It's not a dramatic monologue because it doesn't tell a story, but it's a monologue of how he feels. Remember, it's first person. Now, you won't have heard that when I said it, but if you listen to John Agard reading this, you will hear that he sings certain sections. Um, it's the bits about Dem Tell Me about Lord Nelson, Dem Tell Me about Old King Cole. I mean, Old King Cole was a merry old soul. It's the bit that gets everybody in stitches every time he reads it because he, it's so jolly and happy. And the rhythm of this is based upon of a type of music called Calypso. Now, myself, Miss Porphyrios, Miss Nason, Miss Hildebrand, Mr. Dennehy, we all went and we actually met John Haggard. And we asked him, there's a video of this with Miss Porphyrios somewhere kicking around, um, what he wanted people to know about the poem Checking Out My History. And he said to pay very close attention to the fact that it is Calypso. Um, because Calypso is mu uh, music from the Caribbean. So it's Caribbean music. And it was created by slaves. And they used it to communicate and talk about their masters and um, pretty much ridicule them. Okay, So this is quite an empowering type of music. It's still around today. I suggest you go and listen to some. It's pretty cool. So it's very interesting that in a poem that's about how white people basically whitewashed the um, history of the world that is actually written in the rhythm of a music that was created through the struggle of slavery. Interesting thing to look at. Now there are sections that aren't sung and they are very, very different. They have a, quite a combative sort of argumentative rhythm. Which really makes them stick out. Okay, so Let's go back to the beginning. So we're going to go right to the very, very top and we're going to look at the title as we always do. Checking out me history. Now, the word me here, there are two things that we, we need to look at. First of all, we know that this is first person. So it's obviously quite personal. But there's another thing that makes it that level of personal, okay? This book poem were written in what is known as standard English, com, you know, what, um, what we tend to expect you to write in your exercise books, etc. That would be my. But John Agard says me. And the reason for that is because he is using his voice and he is speaking his patois, which is a Caribbean dialect. Caribbean dialect. Okay, he is. Um, it's a spoken word, as we said. So this is the way he says it, rather than how it should be written down. And that interesting should be. Okay, so if it's his patois, it's his voice, his words. his story which makes it really personal and that all links together quite nicely and then so if we go across to the poem and we have a look at this first section here now you'll notice that Dem Tell Me comes up throughout the poem it starts it it finishes it it comes up all the way through I mean I'm just going to highlight the first couple here and you'll notice it comes up later on down the bottom here then tell me then tell me here at the bottom and 
That repetition is what is known as a refrain. It's like a chorus. And when you consider that, you know, it's, you know, it's supposed to be calypso, which is music, it kind of makes sense to have this kind of repetition going through it. Okay, now, dem, we need to work out who dem is. So again, if we were standard English, that would be they, but it's not, so it's dem. So dem, and we know that me equals John Agard. So who is dem? Well, if we look through the rest of the poem, we can see that he's talking about his education. So the dem in the poem is the white Eurocentric education system that he came from. Okay, so John Agard is from Guyana. Guyana is a Caribbean island. And um, but it was a British colony when Agard was a child. So despite the fact that he was living miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, and miles away from England, he still had an English education, which means that he had English textbooks. He had um, teachers teaching him what English children in London and Liverpool and um, well, Isha were learning at the time, which was, in terms of history, all about white history. Okay, all of those those things that um, you know, all those dates that people are expected to memorise. You know, ten sixty six is mentioned in the poem, and so he that was what he was taught. But unlike white children in England, John Agard is not white. So he's learning, the only thing he's learning about himself and his culture and his people's history is how they were downtrodden, how they were enslaved, how their cultures were destroyed. And he's very angry about that. And we can see that here when he says, dem tell me, dem tell me. The word tell there, okay. He's got no choice, tell. You will learn this, which makes it sound very combative, fighting, argumentative. Okay, and then we've got this use of the word want. Oops, sorry, I dropped my pen. What them want to tell me. Now, the word want here implies that they have made a choice. It's deliberate. To ignore black history. And when you consider what's going on in um, the world right now today, there's a huge amount going on, obviously, with um, the... Um, Black Lives Matter campaign and massive issues with um, the police force um, in the US and in England. And we've also got an awful lot going on now about the whitewashing of history. I don't know whether you've seen on the news lately about people demanding that um, statues of um, people who basically agreed with slavery be removed. And um, there's been a lot of arguments about um, certain political figures and about how they might, would, by today's standards, be considered racist. To be quite frank, they were considered racist by standards back then, but racism wasn't considered to be as much of a problem as it is now, and it's a huge problem. And um, so it's one of the reasons why I picked to do this poem with you guys this week. And um, it's that deliberate choice that he sees them making. They've ignored black history, and he's saying the reason they've ignored black history is what's shown in the next line bandage up me eye with me own history now that line bandage massively interesting because bandage bandage is something that is used to heal so this is obviously you know he's not actually physically been bandaged up so it's obviously a metaphor but it's really ironic because it implies 
that hiding his history is beneficial to him. Now, when you consider how black people have been viewed by society and how, um, well, how people make horrific judgments about black people and minority ethnic people, you could almost see that the reason he's saying bandage here is because the white education system thought they were being helpful, but they weren't, okay? he really doesn't think they are because the next thing he says is blinding me to my own identity blind and if you are blinded by somebody first of all it's another it's a deliberate verb it's a deliberate action and it's also really violent it's a massively violent thing so we've got bandage me i with my own history blind me to my own identity and I'm going to highlight those two words there because that is huge because that is what is central to this poem and I'm actually going to come right the way down to the bottom here the central message of this poem okay how can you know yourself if you don't know your history And that's basically what he's saying, what the whole poem is about, okay? Because he didn't know his own history, he doesn't know himself. He doesn't know his identity, where he comes from. And it's only towards the end that he starts to see how that can be done for himself. Okay, so let's go back up and we've got our refrain. Dem, tell me about 1066 and all that. Dem, tell me about Dick Whittington and he cat. But Toussaint Louverture... No, Dan, never tell me about that. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight Toussaint Louverture and then I'm going to leave that for a second. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But we are going to look at 1066 and Dick Whittington and he cat. Okay. So these are two quite different things. Okay, 1066, Battle of Hastings. Very important date in terms of Eurocentric history, European history. But Dick Whittington and his cat, well, the only time we really come across the myth of Dick Whittington and his cat, I mean, Dick Whittington was really the mayor of London, he was a real person, but all the stuff we know about Dick Whittington and his cat and the streets being paved gold and the rats is from pantomime. This is a fairy tale. So, obviously, these two things don't make sense to each other, next to each other, so this is juxtaposition. But why does John Agar put something that is an important date in Eurocentric history and a pantomime together? And the answer is because they are both as relevant to his history as each other. Okay? It's completely irrelevant to him. He may as well have been told two fairy tales because not, um, Battle of Hastings has no relevance to his life at all. And Dick Winterton and his cat, it's a nice story, but that's it, it's just a story. But Toussaint Louverture, dem never tell me about that. So please point out that word, never. They've ignored it. Now, we're going to go on to Toussaint now. And so we've all had this quite sing-songy bit, him, then tell me about 1066 and all that, then tell me about Dick Whittington and he cat, but Toussaint Louverture, no, then never tell me about that. You know, that kind of repetitive refrain, chorus. And then we get this very, very different bit. Toussaint, a slave with vision, lick back, Napoleon, battalion. Okay, so what we're getting here, first of all, we've got these very, very short sentences. 
or phrases because there's no punctuation. Which makes him sound quite combative again. But look at what this person did. A slave with vision, a lick back Napoleon battalion and first black republic born. So Toussaint Louverture was in fact exactly what um, John Agard says here. He was a slave who organised a rebellion against Napoleon, huge general in, um, in France, and beat them and created the first black republic on Haiti. This is a black man beating a white man. So do you remember me saying how John Agard's history was all about black people being downtrodden, being um, taken from their homes, being turned into slaves and all of that negativity? This is a positive thing. Okay, beat a white man. Nobody's told him anything like about that. Okay, so it's that high, you know, that idea of them, you know, them want to tell me deliberately choosing to ignore this man named Toussaint Louverture. Now you'll notice that his name is spoken right all the way through this, and we need to think about why his name is repeated. Okay, and this repetition. because his name has been forgotten, okay? So we want to remember his name. Repeating this to bring his importance through, okay? He is a massively important person. He created the first black republic, okay? He was huge. And we don't remember him. And John Agard is very angry about the fact that we don't remember him. And you'll notice right the way through this that the, um, the Eurocentric names are kind of sort of flicked past. But he comes back to the stories of these um, black and minority ethnic people that have done amazing things that he was never taught about. I mean, you look at the hopeful language here. Beacon light, vision, light, revolution, republic, okay, and that positivity. And then we get the same similar thing coming down here. Then tell me about the man who discovered a balloon and the cow who jumped over the moon. Then tell me about the dish that ran away with the spoon. So again, we've got bit of history a story now I'm only going to put this here because it is that but I want to look at that de dish that run away with the spoon because although it is another one of those juxtapositions of fairy tales and nursery rhymes with facts that he was taught I'm really interested in the fact that the dish that ran away with the spoon, because it's to do with running away. And, and the reason I'm interested in that is because the next person down is Nanny de Maroon. Now, we're going to come across who Nanny is in a minute, but I find it very interesting that running away, when we think about slavery, we often think about slaves running away. And Nanny Maroon was somebody that helped slaves run away. So it's almost like it's okay to learn about running away, so long as it's not about slaves. And then Nanny de Maroon, and as I said, Nanny Maroon, um, she was a mixed race woman, 
That's what maroon means. And she helped free slaves. And look at how she's represented here. Nanny, Seafar woman of mountain dream. Now, Seafar. To see far means to have vision. So we have this linked to Toussaint Louverture, that more positivity. Of mountain dream, firewoman struggle, hopeful stream to freedom river, dream. I actually find that quite interesting because when I think of dreams, I think of Martin Luther King and I think of him, the dream, I have a dream speech. So it's more of that positivity. Firewoman, okay? She's not easy to get rid of. Hopeful stream to Freedom River. Okay, it's very short, the verse about her, but again, it's this massively um, positive and strength that's shown here. Right now. Ah. Now I'm going to have to check the pen. Okay, so there's a positivity there. And then we come down, if I can. I think that's space on my desk. Okay, come down a bit. And we've got two more of the Dem Tell Me's. Dem tell me about Lord Nelson and Waterloo, but Dem never tell me about Shaka de Great Zulu. Um, then tell me about Columbus in 1492, but them never tell but what happened to, to the Carib and the Arawak too. So first of all, Shaka the Great Zulu, and then we'll go on to the Carib and the Arawak. Okay, so Shaka the Great Zulu, if you've ever seen the film Zulu, I mean, it's atrociously outdated, but it tells the story of Zulu warriors and um, it tells it from a very Eurocentric perspective, so yeah, there's probably better films to watch, but... Um, that's probably the only vision of Zulu warriors that Agob would ever have seen as a child. And, um, yeah, basically, huge Zulu warrior beat back the British. So similar to sort of story to Toussaint. Then tell me about Columbus in 1492. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It's something that's pretty much just taught children right the way through. We know that Columbus did horrific things, and one of the things he did was the tribes of the Carib, Caribbean and the Arawak were basically destroyed. So they are... But he knows nothing of his personal roots, his personal background. Okay. Then we have Dem. Tell me about Florence Nightingale and she lamp, and how Robin Hood used to camp. Excuse me. Dem. Tell me about Old King Cole was a merry old soul. Again, more of that juxtaposition of. We've got all the history stuff here, and then we've got the fairy tales. It's just more of an emphasis of the fact that they'd rather tell him stories that have no relevance than tell him something about himself. But Dem never tell me about Mary Seacole. Now, Mary Seacole is a black nurse who went to the Crimean War. In the same way as Florence Nightingale but there were a few differences. First of all, um, when we get back to school, I do have some articles to show you on Mary Seacole. She's a massively interesting person. She's written a, br uh, a brilliant autobiography about her. Obviously, she wrote it. And it is superb. She, hilarious things that this woman used to get up to. Um, it's, it's well worth a read. Um, and yeah, she wanted to be a doctor from the very earliest age. 
and she is somebody who I really, really do strongly believe you should know about if you don't know about her because she's amazeballs. Okay, so make sure you look her up. Okay, now this next bit here. Okay, so we've gone never to Mary C. Cole, and then we hear her story. From Jamaica, she travelled far to the Crimean War. She volunteered to go, and even when the British said no, she still braved the Russian snow. So we're going to look at that bit first. Okay, so this is a Carib uh, Caribbean woman to the Crimean War. Okay, so that's where Florence Nightingale went this war. So this was a horrific war, and there were so many people dying. Now, interestingly, Mary Seacole did pretty much exactly the same things as Florence Nightingale and it's actually been suggested that an awful lot of what Florence Nightingale picked up and showed everybody to do in order to um, control infection in order to do cleanliness actually came from Mary Seacole but they don't want to know that a black woman came up with these things so it was attributed to her, um, Florence Nightingale. And it was a horrific war, it was absolutely ho horrible, horrible, horrible thing. Now she volunteered to go even when the British said no. British said no because she was black and they didn't want a black woman, they didn't want a black nurse. Now, Mary C. Kyle herself was mixed race. Her father, I believe, was Scottish. Um, but she was still perceived as being black. And um, so they said no. But she went anyway, okay? Even when the British said no, she volunteered to go. So she goes anyway. Okay? So she's incredibly brave. Okay? A healing star among the wounded. A yellow sunrise to the dying. Now, more of those light imagery. Now, yellow sunrise to the dying. One of the things that killed men in um, in the Crimean War was um, a disease called cholera. And one of the things that often happened was it sent your skin yellow. And so this it's that idea of the fact that she's really pushing forward, okay? That despite the fact that she's dealing with men that are going to die she is seen as positive positivity again and then we get this after this list of massively positive metaphors we return to the beginning and we start with a repeat of the opening line Dem tell me, dem tell me what dem want to tell me. Okay, oh, where's my pink pen now? Again, done on purpose. It's deliberate. But now I check in out my own history. And this is where we get the fun bit, my own history. Okay. He's making it happen for himself. I carving out my own identity. Now. First of all, we have this metaphor. Now, to carve something, if you carve something, it is permanent. Okay, he's never going to forget this. This is long term. But it's also quite aggressive. Because if you carve something, you've got to cut things out of it. It's powerful. 
and then his identity. This is who he is. Okay. This poem is so unbelievably powerful and so unbelievably important right now. Okay. Read it, read it again, go and do a little bit of research, find out about the people in it, find out about John Agard if you can. He is, I mean, he's a poetry superstar, to be quite frank. Um, but more importantly, when we're thinking about the world around us today, this really does give you uh, some insight into why so many people are so angry about what is happening in the world at the minute because after all of the struggles for equality that have happened over the decades heck even centuries we're still not there and what we learn in school could actually be a very very big part of why we are not there yet okay so thank you very much for listening year 10 this is going up on youtube now and i will hopefully hear your comments on it thank you very much see you soon